Hi all, uh, warm wishes to all of you. So today we are going to have a mock interview session and with me we have Anand. So he will be giving us a mock interview session. The interview will be mostly based on the NLP, uh, machine learning and NLM roles. So yeah, so we will start Anand. So yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So Anand, uh, give a short introduction about yourself. Okay, sir. First of all, good, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to attend, attend a mock interview, sir. Uh, myself, my name is Dishati Anand. At present, I am uh, in third year of my BTEC. I am doing my bachelor's degree in artificial intelligence and data science, sir. And recent, uh, from the first year of my BTEC, as I am in the field of data science, I am inter keenly interested in data science, sir. After uh, deeply searching about how to learn data science, I have enrolled in some course to learn about data science, where I have learned about all the full stack data science uh, from machine learning to NLP. And recently I have applied for an internship and I, I have recently participated in a hackathon where I have built a movie recommendation system. By the by performance of, by seeing my performance, the company was impressed and they have given me a chance of doing an internship, three months internship with that company, sir. During that internship, I have developed some wonderful projects like sentiment analysis. And I have learned a lot about large language models and I have also learned about MLOps tools. So in that, during that project, I have developed some RAG applications and I have developed one end-to-end -end sentiment analysis application in which I have included this MLOps concept so that uh, during this, uh, we can continuously track the metrics of the model and uh, we can, uh, I have also implemented prefects so that we can continuously train the model, sir. And I have keen interest in, so I, at present, I'm looking for NLP and LLM rules. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, uh, Anand, like for, uh, for this introduction. How do you handle like variable length input and output? Variable length input and output, sir, we can use sequence to sequence model, sir, so that encoder, any, the input can be different length, sir, but encoder will give the fixed length context vectors. Yeah, but while training a model, how you handle it? How you handle this variable length input output? Sir, in general, we can uh, handle this variable by padding, sir, padding technique. Yeah. We have dynamic padding and zero padding technique, sir. First, okay. we will identify the max, the length of the maximum sequence in the entire corpus, sir, so Good. that we will take that that length of that maximum sequence and we will pad zeros to remaining all sequence to match that uh, maximum length. Hmm. And what framework you can use here? Sir, in padding, I generally prefer hugging. I mostly work with hugging first transformers library, sir. In that we can uh, directly perform dynamic padding or zero padding. Okay, okay, fine. As you mentioned about this uh, hugging face library, so what are different kinds of models you have used from hugging face? Sir, I have used uh, some uh, BERT models, LAMA2 models. Open, I mostly work with open source models, sir, and I always work with the pipeline function, which is the most important function in the Hugging Face Transformer, sir. By using this pipeline function, we can import a, any open source model and we can directly perform our task, sir. Right, right. So while importing this pipeline, you are also using tokenizer, right? Auto tokenizer. Yes, sir, auto tokenizer. Yeah. Auto sequence along. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what happens if you put uh, suppose uh, suppose there is a BART model and that with corresponding to that BART model you have a particular tokenizer. So if you use wrongly some other tokenizer, then what will happen? Sir, uh, we, know, we know sir in general while training the model, each model is trained with some particular uh, tokenizer, sir. So we while using that particular model, we have to use that particular tokenizer on which that model was trained. So then only we will get that accuracy, sir. So in general to you. If we are using different tokenizer, sir, we will get some uh, errors or we can, uh, there will be reduced accuracy, sir. So in the hugging phase, they will, they, we can use uh, same tokenizer, sir. In hugging phase, we can directly check the checkpoint, checkpoint, sir, in which by using the checkpoint, we can load the same tokenizer on which that model was trained, sir. So, sir, there will be no discrepancy between this tokenizer and that model. Okay. So we will it throw error or will it run if you use wrong tokenizer? Sometimes it shows errors or sometimes it, there will be reducing accuracies. Reducing accuracy. Okay. Mm. Fine. Um, um, okay. So what is the difference between BART model and BART model? So BERT and BART. Sir, in coming to BERT model, it is in a, BERT means bicoder, bidirectional encoder representation from transformer in which it will, it will, it will get the context from both the, both the directions are in BERT model. Mm, okay. While coming to, I think uh, BERT is an uh, uh, encode, 
but is an uh, encoder sir it is it has trained on auto encoder so that uh, okay. it is better at understanding uh, uh, input sir bart is an uh, i think bart is an auto encoder sir bart is an uh, both mix of encoder and decoder okay uh, can, can you explain this little bit more sir about auto encoder sir in general uh, in in general we are having tra in transfer architecture we have encoder and decoder part sir but uh, with uh, but uh, with particular to our task we can use the encoder architecture separately and we can use the decoder architecture separately sir in suppose we can see that sir from our coming to chat gpt gpt models like generative pre trained transformer models we can see that they are very high, highly capable of generating such sir because they are mostly trained on auto regressive they are trained on auto regressive sir they all because the generate gpt models were trained by using only decoder part of the transform architecture sir they only use the decoder part of the transform architecture so in, in general we know that the decoder is very capable of predicting the next token based on the previous token sir as the uh, gpt models were trained on this decoder architecture it is uh, it is known as auto regression modeling sir so as the gpt models were trained is auto regression it is very capable of generating text sir okay. well coming to other models like bart and uh, some some while coming to other models they some were only trained only with the encoder part of the transform architecture sir. okay or okay. like some got got your point uh, what you were mentioning okay okay so my one more question will be like how do you deploy a model like which you trained in hugging face to production how you de deploy like you did a project you mentioned about like streamlit so the apart from streamlit like what are the cloud sources which you have used or in general how you deploy a model from hugging face to production sir in general you uh, know while uh, while using hugging face sir we can push the model or we can deploy the model or we can push the model into the hub sir hugging face hub so that e everyone can use uh, otherwise apart from the streamlit we can uh, use aws cloud or azure, microsoft azure sir we can deploy by using uh, from in aws we can use elastic beanstack ec2 server hmm. and s3 bucket we can use we can deploy our models and we can keep the model into production Okay, so you have experience on deployment, sir. I try to work on this AWS, but it is asking some credit card, and uh, I have also given, sir. But sometimes it uh, took some. I have debit some money was cancelled, yeah. sir. That's why I stopped working. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, I hope like when you will go for internship or when you will actually work in company, then you will really get the chance to to a deployment. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes. Okay. Okay, yeah. Nice to talk to you, Anand. Uh, do you have any more questions to me? Yes. Okay, fine. Then yeah, uh, like we will stop here. Uh, it was good interacting with you, and I hope like all this mock interview experience will help you for your actual interview, and this will also help my audience. So like I will ask them to subscribe to my channel, AD Academy, and to share this knowledge with all of your friends, and you can share this. Uh, like your mock interview video with all of your friends okay